yeah, she was bright and bubbly, uh, always up. She was up for anything, so it, it, it came right out of the blue. She, she went to school. Um, she not long started in her secondary school, year seven. Um, they had a group PE lesson where they had to run round the school field to twice and they were all going to be timed. It was They called it cross country. We got a phone call at lunchtime um, to say that she'd been taken ill. But when we, we got to the hospital, they wouldn't let us see her. Um, then they, they took us into a, a little side room and then all of a sudden they came in and said there wasn't anything more they could do for her. This is me in the middle, in the green, and my two sisters and my mom. This was actually right after we were diagnosed with HOFH. And uh, my mom is speaking about our xanthelasma and how she found out it was a very long process, actually with my dad together, how they found out that we have HOFH. And it, it was a, a horrible experience for both of them because... They didn't know what that is. And they went to so many doctors, asked so many people, and they really didn't give up. And uh, in the end, they found out that this is HOFH and this is xanthelasma. And uh, they said that our life expectation would be maximum 12 years. By the way, I'm 36 now. Um, yeah, and this is the video how Professor Dr. steinhagen Thiessen explains uh, what we have and how she asked my mom questions about how we found out. So the xanthelasma were on, on the joints mainly, on the knees, on the elbows, and uh, on different parts of the body also. Um, yeah, it was a very difficult experience as a child to go through that, here you can see uh, my sister's knees. It was the most extreme case with my middle sister. So we are four children, and uh, at that time we were three only, three girls. After 11 years, uh, my my brother was born, but luckily he didn't have a HOFH, so yeah. On one hand, that's very good. On the other hand, my parents got this diagnosis that three of their kids have it and uh, they might not live very long. So yeah, it was a very difficult uh, time. And for, for me as a kid, uh, I remember when I was going to birthday parties and I could not have a cake or chocolate or anything which could elevate my, my cholesterol levels. And I, I didn't really understand, but uh, I was really lucky, first of all, to be in Germany because I have Syrian Turkish roots. And uh, second, my parents were really powerful to go through all of that and not to give up and to try anything they could try because they didn't have any knowledge and they were trying to gain knowledge and to ask and to read and to do everything. So yeah, I was really lucky. Hi, I'm Avery Watts and I'm from the United States. I'm 15 years old. I live with my mom, my dad and my two brothers. I also have two dogs and one cat. I go to a high school for the arts where I studied dance and an advanced course load of both high school and college level classes. I dance Monday through Sunday, multiple hours each day. Between my studies and dance, I have very little time for anything else. When I was six years old, I was diagnosed with HOFH. I didn't have any of the typical symptoms, but my mom knew HOFH ran in my family's history. My mom asked for the doctor to test my lipid levels. My total cholesterol was over 800 milligrams per deciliter, or 21.2 millimoles per liter. So, I was quickly referred to a pediatric cardiologist. The first doctor we saw, 
told my parents that I shouldn't start treatment until I went through puberty. Thankfully, my mom sought out a second opinion from a different cardiologist. I was started on treatment immediately. Over the past nine years, I have been on oral medications, had LDL apheresis every week, and I've started on a drug transfusion that has brought my levels down significantly. This has allowed me to now only have apheresis once a month. My mom has advocated for me over the past nine years, getting me the best team of doctors and treatments available. I don't know where I would be if I didn't have such a strong advocate. HOFH in my treatments has caused me to miss out on birthday parties, field trips, and a lot of school. My parents and doctors have worked hard to make sure I'm able to live as normal of a life as possible. Though, my normal isn't everyone else's normal. We were very lucky. Um, Avery showed no outward signs of having HOFH. So she was diagnosed, um, we like to say a little by accident. Um, but um, within the first year, she was started on medications. And then um, a port was put in her chest to facilitate doing apheresis treatments. And right before her seventh birthday, she started doing apheresis. Um, now, these treatments were a little difficult for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, uh, for Avery, um, in, to facilitate the apheresis and the amount of blood flow that needs to go through the machine, the needles they use are very big needles. <laughs> um, there are 16 gauge needles, I believe is what is used on her. And um, so seeing two 16 gauge needles stuck in your chest every day when you're six years old um, was quite traumatizing. Um, there were times that, you know, she'd be screaming and crying and we're trying to hold her down and we're crying and it was just a mess. A lot, uh, there was a lot of trauma um, in the beginning and we were going um, originally every two weeks and then for many years, every week, um, the hospital that uh, was the closest that had apheresis for her and where her doctor was located is three hours from us. So um, we would leave early in the morning, drive three hours to the hospital, um, get, do everything we had to do pre-apheresis, um, get her hooked up. And the apheresis at that time was taking um, around five hours. Um, and then whatever had to be done post-apheresis, blood work, that sort of thing. And then we drive 12 hours back home. So they were like 12 hours of very long, very exhausting days for all of us. When Avery was diagnosed, um, the hospital, which uh, she was seen at for apheresis and to see her doctor and um, any appointments, any tests that needed to be done, uh, that hospital had no agreement with our health insurance company. So Every time we had to have any appointment or we wanted to go to the hospital for any reason, I had to spend, I don't know how, like hours and hours on the phone with the health insurance company trying to explain to them that, no, she's not gotten better since I talked to you last week. <laughs> um, this is something that's lifelong and um, it's, you know, it's, it's a chronic illness that she is going to have forever. Um, and it took a very long time um, for them to understand that. And unfortunately, I'd have to talk to a different person every time I called in and start from scratch. So that was difficult. I was diagnosed uh, at the age of four uh, in uh, Greece, but officially I was uh, diagnosed uh, in the US having also the gene test. Uh, and uh, uh, that happened in Philadelphia, and then I started doing uh, plasma pheresis uh, first, like uh, somebody mentioned earlier. Uh, we didn't have LDL pheresis, and uh, it wasn't just as, uh, such, uh, as good, but uh, it was uh, that thing I had to do uh, for a while before uh, I can get into LDL pheresis, and also, of course, statins and later azitimib. 
Uh, so uh, one of the uh, main challenges for me and from the patients, the other HOFH patients I was talking to, and by the way, I'll have to tell you that uh, this is a personal experience. Each uh, uh, patient has a different mentality on how to process uh, uh, those kind of news when you get diagnosed with that. So I can only represent myself and potentially some other people that uh, they think likewise, but it's just personal opinion. So uh, the main problem would be the loophole when you do uh, LDL apheresis. Uh, I, when uh, I was uh, finishing the uh, school, uh, the um, first grade and second grade, uh, people would have three months of vacation. I would have another week or another two weeks according to whether I was having uh, an LDL apheresis after that. So my plans were going, uh, uh, were short-lived. And the other thing uh, that the average patient uh, doing this will think that, uh, okay, I'm doing this now. Uh, maybe they started at the young age. I started at the age of six. And I was doing it for uh, 19 years. Now I'm on to the new drugs uh, uh, that helped me with uh, the LDL apheresis. But anyway, uh, the, the main thought is that uh, am I going to do this after 30 years, after 40 years? Am I still going to do this? Uh, will, will I find a partner, let's say, somebody that will accept that and uh, my condition? I think that uh, fellow uh, HOFH patients at some point of their lives, uh, they had these uh, obscure thoughts about the future and how will that be. And then uh, the other thing I would like to say is that um, we also, it's funny because uh, some of us, we have this feeling of dirty blood. Uh, for instance, if you do your treatment every other week or every week, you feel, let's say you do it on Friday morning. So on uh, Thursday evening, you will feel like you are very heavy, even though it's asymptomatic you will feel very heavy like you have, um, well, it's pure psychology, but you will feel that. And then the next day, once you have done uh, your aphoresis, you will feel uh, very light. Uh, even though it's exhausting, you will feel like you, you have energy to do many, many other things. Hi, I'm Marwa Sadek. I'm 38 years old and I live in London, UK. I work as a medical interpreter and hold a degree in psychology. I have two beautiful girls. One is six years old and the other is 12 year old. A very keen tennis player and I enjoy reading whenever I get the chance. As when you have younger children, you tend to run around their hobbies rather than your hobbies. Um, I was diagnosed with HOFH at a very early age. Uh, I was three years old. My mother noticed that I had symptoms on my eyelids, the yellowish deposits and um, they ran tests in Great Ormond Street, and that's when they officially diagnosed me with HOFH. Straight away, we started with medication. And when I turned nine years old, we started with plasma exchange, which is very similar to LDL apheresis. And till this day, I have this treatment. Um, living with HOFH has its challenges. And every stage in life, I found the challenges are um, very similar and as a start when i was in school some schools didn't understand that i have to attend at least one day a week um the hospital to have my treatment and that could affect on my schoolwork and as an adult finding a job and explaining to them that i have a certain medical condition which is very rare not a lot of people are aware of because when you say you have high cholesterol a lot of the population have a high cholesterol but obviously with hofh it's much more serious um, so I had some of the, you know, um, managers gave me very difficult time regarding taking time off work to attend my treatment, um, especially as well during my pregnancy where the, um, I had to attend extra appointments to make sure that I'm okay through the pregnancies. My employee was not very happy with that. Other than problems at work and schools, um, you have to understand that when you meet um, a potential partner that things might get serious, you have to explain your diagnosis and what impact it could have on a family life. For example, when I met my partner, I explained to him that for in order for us to have children or the possibility of having children for him to be tested if he has FH, because I don't want my children to... Um, 
I know that they will have FH, but if the he does have the gene as well, which means potentially that I have HOFH. So it impacts on your personal life, um, your um, professional life. Um, and as well, sometimes with friendships, you have to explain, I have limited places to go eat. I need to make sure that the restaurant we go to have um, reasonably low fat um, options that I could eat. Um, and the problem is with HOFH, you could look absolutely fine physically. Um, it doesn't show any physical symptoms unless it's quite bad. So a lot of people tell you, but you look healthy, you're fine. You're absolutely, you know, you're, you're, you're slim, you're young. Um, and that's because there, there isn't any um, awareness. There is not much awareness with HOFH. It's not a known condition. Even in terms of getting medical insurance, um, they don't look at you as an individual case. As soon as you mention you have HOFH, you either get refused or the premium is extremely high. In my case, I am not a cardiac patient. I have um, high cholesterol. However, I have no cardiac problems. But unfortunately, there is no option to say, yes, I am HOFH, but I don't have any risk of um, my risk of cardiac problems is quite low because I was diagnosed at a very young age. My hopes for the future for HOFH, that there will be some sort of testing for babies um, and early diagnosis, because as I said, and I can't push it enough and say it enough, the earlier the diagnosis, the better outcome for a future, um, less cardiac problems. Um, I'm a living example. I've been very lucky to be treated in the right hospitals with the right doctors. And I have an amazing mother who actually fought for me to get to the right places. I'm a mother of two. I was always told that I will never be a mom with my condition. Um, I am a miracle <laughs> in a way. I hate to say it, but what happened with me is is um, a few years ago, if you read about our condition, the, the we were told we won't live you know, over the age of 30, 40. And now with the new medication that's coming out, with the technology that's happening in the medical field, I can um, dare to dream that I'll have face full of wrinkles and white hair, and I'll hopefully one day see my grandchildren. So please join us on 4th of May to raise an awareness of HOFH.